Welcome, viewer. I invite you on this journey in a quest to demystify science. I am Edward Santiago Kufu, your presenter. For this lesson, we'll be focusing on measuring instruments for length and mass. Would you use a thermometer to measure the length of an object if you have a ruler? Certainly not. In a scientific investigation, measurements are made and the correct instrument is required for specific measurements. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify the main instruments for length and mass. Two, identify the type of length that can be measured by these instruments. Three, stick the SI units and the subunits for measuring length and mass. Four, convert from one unit to another. Now let's focus on measuring length. Length is the distance between two points in space. The standard or SI unit for length is the meter, which we saw in our previous lesson, whose symbol is small m. For very small or large distances, SI prefixes are used. The table shows some of the other units of length. As can be seen in the table, there's a column for unit, a column for symbol, a column for number of meters, and an example. Now let's take the first one, kilometer, which has a symbol km. The number of meters is 1,000 meters. Example is the distance of about five hockey pitches. Now we have meter, which has a symbol small m. And the number of meters is one meter. That is the length of a meter rule. The rule used in drawing items on the chalkboard. We also have centimeter, symbol cm. And the number of meters is 0.01 meter. An example is the thickness of a shirt button. We also have millimeter, symbol small m, small m. The number of meters is 0.001 meter. For example, is the thickness of a coin. We also have micrometer, which has the symbol mu m. And the number of meters is 0.000001 meter, which is the diameter of a bacteria. Last but not the least, we have nanometer, which is small n m. The number of meters, we have 0.000000001 000 meter. For example, thickness of an RNA molecule. Now let's look at converting from kilometer to meter. For example, the distance between Boko and Bogatanga is 79 kilometers. What is the distance in meters? That is the question that we need to focus on. Now per the solution, we still need to go by the problem solving approach. We'll start with the analysis. Let's list the known and the unknown. Now for known, we mean the distance that was given, which is distance in kilometer, which is 79. For the unknown, that is the distance we are converting to, which is in meters, which we don't know. Since the question is asking us to convert 79 kilometers to meters, we know that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Then 79 kilometers will be equal to 79 kilometers multiplied by 1,000 meters or divided by one kilometer. We then cancel out kilometer and we use a calculator to evaluate this problem and we have a final answer of 79,000 meters. Does our answer make sense to you? Now let's look at a second example. The distance between Kumasi and Senyeja is 50,000 meters. Now the question is, what is the distance in kilometers? And by this, we'll still go by the problem solving approach by stating the known and the unknown. The question requires us to convert 50,000 meters to kilometers. But well, we know that 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer. Then 50,000 meters will be equal to 50,000 meters multiplied by one kilometer or divided by 1,000 meters. We then cancel out meter, we cancel out the zeros, and we'll be left with 50 multiplied by the one kilometer, giving us a final answer of 50 kilometers. Does this solution make sense to you? Now let's look at another example. The height of a plant from the ground is 0 0.25 meters. What is the height in centimeters? Still going by the problem solving approach, let's list the known and the unknown. The question requires us to convert 0 0.25 meters to centimeters. 
But we know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Then 0 0.25 meters will be equal to 0 0.25 meters multiplied by 100 centimeters all divided by one meter. So we then cancel out the meter. And with a calculator, we arrive at a final answer of 25 centimeters. Does this result make sense to you? Now let's move on to measuring instruments of length. The measuring instruments for length are ruler, meter rule, surveyor's tape measure, vernier calipers, micrometer screw gauge, a pair of calipers. Now let's take the first one, ruler. It is used to measure a few centimeters to millimeters. It is also used to measure length of lines in tests of practicals. Now let's look at a meter rule. It is used to measure a few centimeters. To measure the length of a pendulum. It is also used to measure the length of a wire. Now let's look at vernier calipers. Vernier calipers are used to measure short distances of few millimeters to centimeters. It is also used to measure the inner and the outer diameters of small cylinders. Now we look at the micrometer screw gauge. It is used to measure the diameter of a wire. It is also used to measure the thickness of a sheet of metal or a metal foil. It is also used to measure the thickness of a paper. Now we move on to look at the function of the surveyor's tip. It is used to measure the length of several meters, such as the dimension of a hockey pitch. The following precautions should be followed when using a ruler. So the meter rule is placed on whatever is supposed to be measured such that there wouldn't be any space between the meter rule and what is to be measured, in this case, the line from A to B. We position the zero mark on the meter rule at the starting point, that is point A, so that the measurement will be taken from that point to point B. In reading your final measurement, the eye should be positioned exactly above the mark, that is mark B, so that there wouldn't be the problem of parallax, which will introduce an error in the measurement. And from what I have, the measurement is 61 centimeters. Now let's move on to measuring mass. The mass of an object is the quantity of matter contained in the object. It determines the degree to which an object is pulled by gravity and the extent of resistance of an object to change in its motion. It is different from the weight of an object. This is because we know that weight is a force, the amount of gravitational force acting on a body. Now let's move on to differences between mass and weight. So we have a table with mass on the left and weight on the right. Mass is the quantity of matter contained in an object, whilst weight is the measure of the force of gravity acting on a body. The value of mass is constant for an object no matter where the object is found in the universe. The value of weight varies depending on where the object is found on the earth or in the universe. Mass is measured with different balances, such as the beam balance, the chemical balance, the top pan balance, etc. Whilst weight is measured using a spring balance. Mass is measured in kilograms, whilst weight is measured in newtons. Mass is a scalar quantity, that is, it has only magnitude but no direction. Whilst weight is a vector quantity because it has both magnitude and direction. Now, units of measuring mass. The SI unit for measuring mass is kilogram, with the symbol kg. The other subunits of mass are grams, milligrams, micrograms, etc. The relationship among them is summarized in the table. In this table, we have a column for units, symbol, relationship, and examples. The first example is ton, which has a symbol T, which is 1,000 kilograms. An example is the mass of a medium-sized car. We have kilogram, which is kg. A kilogram is one kg. For example, that is the mass of salt, for example. We have gram, which has the symbol g, which is 0 0.001 kilograms. For example, that's the mass of a CD coin. We also have milligram, which is mg which has a relation of 0 0.000001 kilogram, the mass of 10 grains of salt. 
Now let's look at interconversion of units of mass. For example, the total mass of groundnut harvested from the Agricultural Science School farm of Don Kokrum is 5,000 kilograms. What is the mass in grams? Now the solution, we will still go by the known and the unknown approach, that's the systematic approach. From the question we know that the stated quantity is 5,000 kilograms. The unknown is the equivalent in grams. Let us use the relationship between kilogram and gram to solve the problem. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So if one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams, then 5,000 kilograms will be equal to 1,000 grams multiplied by 5,000 kilograms or divided by one kilogram, which is equal to 5 million grams. Now the question is, does this result make sense to you? Now let's take a second example. The mass of animal tissue required for an experiment in the biology laboratory of Sehuyoso Senior High School is 6 milligram. What is this equivalent in kilogram? Now the solution. Let's list the known and the unknown. We know from the question that the tissue is in milligrams and it is 6 milligrams. And we are looking for its equivalent in kilograms. Now let's use the relationship between milligram and kilogram to solve the problem. One million milligram is equal to one kilogram. So if one million milligram is equal to one kilogram, then six milligram will be equal to one kilogram multiplied by six milligram or divided by a million milligram. And this is equal to 6.0 times 10 raised to the power negative 6 kilograms. Now this answer doesn't make sense to you. You see the relation. Now let's move on to measuring instrument of mass. The instrument used in measuring mass is called the balance. There are different kinds of balances depending on their sensitivity and design. The sensitivity of a balance is related to the smallest mass that makes its pointer move over one division on its scale. For example, a balance with a sensitivity of one gram will need a mass of at least one gram to move its pointer. The following are the measuring instruments of mass. Beam balance, chemical balance, lever arm balance. We also have the top pan balance, which is an instrument used to weigh solid materials when perfectly accurate measurements are not necessary. We look at a beam balance. This is a device for measuring the mass of objects by putting it in a dish that hangs from one end of a straight bar and balancing it with a standard mass at the other end. Lever balance. The object whose mass is to be measured is placed in a pan. It has two scales. An outer scale calibrated to read up to 1,000 grams, and an inner scale, which reads up to 250 grams. The sliding mass is shifted to the bottom when the outer scale is used. It is shifted up when the inner scale is used. A screw at the bottom is used to adjust the scale to zero before the object is placed in the pan. Now we move on to chemical balance. It has two pans. The object whose mass is to be measured is placed on the left-hand pan, and a standard mass is added to the right-hand pan until they are balanced. The total mass of the standard masses on the right hand is equal to the mass of the object. Now let's move on to the electronic balance. It is an electronic device used to measure the mass of objects more accurately. It gives precise readings. It gives digital results. Now last but not the least is the top pan balance. It is an instrument used to weigh solid materials when perfectly accurate measurements are not necessary. Now at this point, let us recap all that we've done for this session. We looked at length. We said length is the distance between two points in space. We also looked at mass. We said mass is the quantity of matter a substance contains, whilst weight is the force of gravity acting on an object. We also looked at the SI unit for length. And we said that is the meter. And other units are kilometer, centimeter, 
millimeter, micrometer, nanometer, etc. The SI unit for mass is kilogram, and other units are ton, gram, milligram, etc. The measuring instruments of length are ruler, meter rule, the surveyor's tip, vernier caliper, micrometer screw gauge, and a pair of calipers. The measuring instruments of mass are beam balance, chemical balance, lever balance, electronic balance, and top pan balance. All too soon, we've come to the end of today's lesson. I want you to answer the questions you find below this point, and let me know your feedback. Keep learning, keep studying science. I will see you some other time. See you. Bye.